You know, the 1980s was a very interesting time for TV heartthrobs because there was a lot of handsome men that were showing up on the small screen. And this guy, uh, the poor man's Tom Selleck or the poor man's Lee Majors, whatever you want to call him, uh, should have been a superstar. But the native of Moshu, Texas, boys, when he was on the small screen, especially uh, what he called limited series and long-standing series like Matt Houston, he really drove the women <coughs> and some of the men crazy with emotion. So today we're talking about the very handsome and the very talented Lee Horsley. Now born Lee Arthur Horsley in Moshu, Texas, is an American film, television, and theater actor known primarily for his starring roles in a television series, Near a Wolf, Matt Houston, which was a big success over three seasons in the mid-80s, and Paradise. He also starred in the 82 film The Sword and the Sorcerer <coughs> and recorded the audiobook edition of Lonesome Dove. Now, he began his acting career touring and stage productions of West Side Story, Damn Yankees, and Oklahoma. In 81, he portrayed TV detective Archie Goodwin in a short-lived and very acclaimed NBC drama series Near a Wolf. He also played the title character in the 82-85 ABC detective series Matt Hewson and starred as Ethan Allen Cord in the 88-91 Western Heritage award-winning series Paradise. This was eventually followed by a lead role on the CBS police drama Bodies of Evidence. Now, his appearance in the feature-length cult film The Sword or Sorcerer led to great acclaim. He also appeared in a sequel uh, 28 years later called Tales of an Ancient Empire. He, uh, when he recorded the audiobook edition of Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove, some people were questioning why he wasn't asked to be in the Mirity series to begin with. Now, in 2006, Horsley and Marshall R. Teague traveled the world in search of exotic game on the Outdoor Life Network for the reality show ben Benley's Dream Hunts. In 2012, he also made a mini comeback appearing in the Quentin Tarantino film Django Unchained <coughs> as Sheriff Gus and in its uh, unofficial sequel, the 2015 Western The Hateful Eight, as a stagecoach driver. He also starred opposite Linda Carter in a series set in the French and Indian War, Hawkeye, which you really have to check out. A very interesting uh, show to, to be sure. Now, Horsley, again, born in Mulshu, uh, Muleshoe, Texas, the seat of Bailey County. He eventually grew up in the Denver, Colorado area, sang in a church choir, and graduated from Englewood High School in 73. Now, he eventually married Stephanie Downer in 1980, and they had a child together, Amber, in 1981, and a son, Logan, in 83. Horsley, an avid outdoorsman, is also a horseman, rodeo participant, and, of course, a, a very well-regarded Western novelist. Now, his filmography is, is quite light and uh, just a, a few uh, movie roles. The Sword and the Sorcerer, Unlawful Passage, Nightmare Man, Dis Dismembered, Jasper, The Story of a Mule, Showdown in Area 51, Again, Tales of an Ancient Empire. Again, Django Unchained and The Hateful Eight. But he had uh, much uh, more interesting roles on TV. Uh, Near a Wolf, The Wild Woman of Chastity Gulch. Very underrated movie, you can find it. The Love Boat, 13 at Dinner, When Dreams Come True. Matt Hughes in 82-85. Norton South, Book Two, as Rafe uh, Bo Bodine. Crossings, Infidelity, Dolly, Single Woman Married Men, The Face of Fear, Palomino, which was also a TV movie where he played Tate Jordan, Paradise, Bodies of Evidence, The Corpse Had a Familiar Face, French Silk, of course, uh, Hawkeye for 22 episodes with Linda Carter, The Snowy River, The McGregor uh, uh, Saga, where he played uh, two episodes uh, uh, detailing the prodigal father, The Care and Handling of Roses, Home Song, Wind on Water, and his last major TV role at this uh, writing is Touch by an Angel. Now, we're going to go over a little bit. Uh, I think we're just going to talk right now about Matt Houston. I hope you don't mind because that's where people know him the, the best. Uh, not say he was typecast, but, you know, they try to do a Magnum P.I., but like in, in the Texas area. Now, this American crime drama TV series, uh, where Matt plays a wealthy old man who decides to hold a side job as a P.I., now, it was created by Lawrence Gordon and produced by Aaron Spelling, and it was on ABC for three seasons from 82 to 85. Now, uh, as the mustachio Texas Holman, Matlock Hewson, uh, he's doing his investigating in Ellie and his abundant free time. The show also starred the luminous Pamela Hensley as his lower sidekick, CJ, 
you know, uh, and George Weiner as a continuously frustrated business uh, manager, Murray. Now, during the show's third and final season, in 85, the great Buddy Epson played Euston's uncle, Roy Euston. Now, most of the episodes of the series typically involve one of Euston's uh, close friends being murdered or involved in some criminal enterprise, requiring his assistance. CJ had access to an Apple III computer named Baby, containing a database on virtually all living and deceased persons, allowing her to provide all necessary information. Murray frequently complained that Matt's PI business failed to make money, while Matt treated it more as an expensive hobby rather than a profit-making venture. Now, uh, the technically the pilot movie or series pilot came as a two-episode called X-22. In this one, uh, Matt Houston comes to California to manage offshore drilling with plenty of cars, a helicopter, and many millionaire toys to choose from. Houston finds plenty of time for his PI hobby. Now, get this. That, that episode, Barbara Carrera, Jill St. John, uh, appeared as did Cliff Robertson. Now, uh, special guest stars on the series, a wide range of A and B actors from the, uh, the, uh, the decade and the previous decades, Bradford Dillman, Murray Hamilton, Heather Locklear, Vic Tabak, Mr. Blackwell, Carol Lawrence, Christina Ferrer, Brett Eklund, John Beck, Dick Butkus, uh, Forrest Tucker, Janet Lee, Keel Martin, Cesar Romero, William Smith, Jill Whelan, Sid Caesar, James Coco, Hope Lange, Misty Rowe, Lloyd Bachner, Gary Frank, Michelle Phillips, uh, Tina Louise, Hugh O'Brien, Norman Fell, Troy Donahue, David Cassidy, Monty Markham, Jessica Walter, Beverly Garland, Gary Lockwood, Cameron Mitchell, and on and on, Jeanette Nolan, William Wyndham, Dennis Cole, Richard Jagel, Stan Shaw, George Takai, uh, Barbie Benton, Sonny Bono, Jean Jacques Gabor, Werner Klemper, Jimmy Bale, Alan Hale, Marianne Mobley, Dick Sargent, uh, Barbara Rush, Stella Stevens, Chuck Connors, Ed Nelson, Don Stroud, Robert Alda, Shelley Fabray, David Grohl, Don Wells, uh, Ernest Borgnine, Ann Turkle, uh, Chuck, uh, Chuck McCann, uh, Jane Meadows, Michael Constantine, Bo Hopkins, uh, Ron Palillo, uh, Fred Grandy, Robert Goulet, George Karras, Renee Taylor, um, Victoria Spalling, uh, Family Thing, Lynn Holly Johnson, Martin Landau, Marky Post, uh, Terry Moore, Joseph Campanella. Just in the first season, what a what a what a what a cast, ladies and gentlemen, what a cast. But the uh, the idea about the series, uh, and we're going towards the last episode. Uh, it was kind of uh, Elizabeth, his lost love, came. In the final episode of March 29, 1985, to wrap up the series. Now, the DVD of Matt Hewson was released uh, in on March 9, 9, 2010. Season 2 came out in 2017, in June, and Season 3, June, July 21, 2017. Now, on May 4, 2015, <clears throat> now... Uh, it was announced that all three seasons of Matt Houston would be released the summer of 2015 by Vi Incorporated, and again the, the release was pushed back. Now, what uh, it only had one Emmy nomination in the three years for uh, outstanding film editing for a series. The complete uh, actually it was kind of weird here. The complete series came out before the complete third season came out. Uh, typical uh, list. So, if you want to find out uh, a whole bunch of information on uh, Matt Hewson, and uh, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, this is what he had on at the time. And uh, I give you I give you this just as a thing. He had uh, Dynasty, T.J. Hooker, Matt Houston, Glitter, Finder Lost Lost Loves, then the Colbys, uh, CBS Summer Playhouse. Nightingales, Beverly Hills, to a nine or two and zero, and then the Heights and Melrose Place. He was always doing something. He only, I think, from 1960 to 2005, he had about 30 or 40 TV series that was on, including various feature films. And the TV movies ran from 67 to 2006. Now, what I find quite interesting is that uh, the uh, Lee Horsley never really reached the heights where he should have. Very charismatic guy, very very handsome man, very well liked. But it just maybe was caught in the John Eric Hexham uh, uh, situation where when John Eric died, there was a kind of a, 
uh, like the the handsome leading man of TV, like it was kind of sad for a lot of the followers, and maybe his death kind of put a put a no pun intended a death knell on the importance of lead actors. And don't forget Miami Vice, he had two, and uh, he couldn't Matt Houston couldn't compete on the level of the other series, even though it should have been a higher ratings uh, thing. But Aaron Spelling gave it three years, and for what? But you rarely see it on TV. It's kind of weird in syndication. You don't see it in Canada, I know. Maybe in some U.S. jurisdictions. So that's the story of the very handsome and very talented Lee Horsley. If you like what we're doing here, please let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, TV history is like your childhood memories. If we talk about it, it must be important because you're listening. Have a good day. Bye.